Hello everyone, welcome to another video. Uh, in this video, I'm going to discuss the new format titration questions. Because if you have looked at the specimen paper, there's not uh, the titration question has uh, changed significantly because there is no moles part. Usually, uh, the titration question used to have eight to ten marks uh, of moles part. Now they have deducted it, they've reduced it. Uh, we don't know, we still don't know whether moles are going to be tested in paper four or not because uh, since the marks I have reduced, uh, the overall marks of P4 are reduced, uh, that leaves them limited options to test. So not everything is going to be tested. For example, if you look at the specimen paper, there is no interpretation question. There is no graph question. But it is still possible that they can still give you a graph question, which you have to plot and interpret the graph. So I'm just going to discuss uh, the titration question, uh, which have changed so that... Uh, you guys can settle your nerves a bit. So we are going to discuss three uh, distinct questions. So I hope uh, this is going to help you. So in question number one, a student investigated, a student investigated the reaction between different solutions of aqueous sodium carbonate, solution K and L. Solution K and L are two different solutions of sodium carbonate and dilute hydrochloric acid using two different indicators. So two experiments was done. In experiment one, uh, the burette was rinsed with water and then with dilute hydrochloric acid. Great. Then the burette was filled with hydrochloric acid. Some of the hydrochloric acid was run out of the burette so that the level of dilute hydrochloric acid was on the burette scale. Right. Because if you see the burette now, if you see the burette, it's something like this. And readings may start from here. But obviously, it, it can contain the liquid at the top as well. So what do we have to do? We have to open the tap, release the liquid until it reaches the level of the burette. So using a measuring cylinder, 25 centimeter cube of solution K, which is sodium carbonate, was poured into conical flask. And uh, five drops of methyl orange indicator and five drops of thymosyl indicator were added to the conical flask. The conical flask was placed on the white tile. On, the reason for placing things on the white tile is to see observations more carefully. Now, most likely, uh, color is going to change here. So, white tile just helps us to, uh, to see the change in color more clearly. Then, dilute acyl was added slowly from the bureau to the conical flask while the flask was swirled. Swirl means mixed or shake or shook until the solution turned yellow. Okay. This is the first color change. Then more hydrochloric acid from the burette was added to the conical flask while swirling the flask until the solution changed color again. This is the second color change. Right? So first of all, use the burette diagram to complete the table for experiment one. That is pretty simple. You just have to read the uh, initial readings. Uh, let me... Yeah, so burette reading at first color change. This is it. That is exactly 12. Final burette reading at second color change. This is 22.4. Initial burette reading is 1.6. Volume of dilute hydrochloric acid added for the first color change. So you have to subtract the reading and the answer would be uh, 10.4, 10.4. What did you do? A burette reading at first color change minus the initial reading will give you the volume of hydrochloric acid that is used for the first color change. Total volume of hydrochloric acid added for the second color change, uh, that would be 20.8. And in this case, we subtracted the final bureau reading at second color change from initial bureau reading. Right? Now, for experiment two, the conical flask was emptied and rinsed with distilled water. Uh, experiment one was repeated using solution L instead of K. It's still a sodium carbonate solution, but obviously there's a difference. Uh, okay, again, we'll have to fill this table. These are, those three marks were really like the free marks. And these three marks are also so easily attainable. Burette reading at first color change, you just have to you just have to read it. 
and there, there, there are always going to be some observation questions, and most likely the observation questions are going to have these diagrams. Either they will give you Buren diagrams, or they can give you a thermometer to read the temperature and then plot those temperatures on the graph, right? But there are going to be these freebies, freebie sort of marks, because there is a whole objective that they are going to test. That is observation. That how well are you, how well are you equipped to read? you know to read the numbers on the equipment to read the readings on the equipment anyway so buret reading at first color change 19.7 uh, at second color change it is 35.123 uh, and initial buret reading is 4.1 volume of hydrochloric acid added for the first color change initial minus this this minus this that would give us 15.6, 15.6, and uh, the total volume hydrochloric acid added for second color change. So that would be this minus uh, initial buret reading minus this one. So uh, 35.3 minus 4.1 will give us 31.2. Okay, so do we have another part here? Yes. State the color change observed at the end point when dilute hydrochloric acid is added to methyl orange in an alkaline solution. Methyl orange in alkaline solution is yellow, and when you added acid to it, it turned to orange or red. Okay. For experiment one, compare the volume of hydrochloric acid needed for the first color change with the volume of hydrochloric acid uh, for the second color change. So, if you just uh, pause the video and go back uh, to around 20 to 25 seconds, you will see in experiment one, for first color change, the volume used was 10.4. And uh, for second color change, the volume used was 20.8. So you have to compare the volume. Just writing the volumes are not going to uh, do you any good. They're not going to get you any marks. First of all, you need to write that uh, for second. This one, this is the for the second color change. The volume used for second color change is is evidently more. So you will write the greater volume. Greater volume of HCl is added greater volume of acl is added uh, for the second color change for second color change but this is only going to get you one mark also tell how much greater so you will tell that uh, almost almost nay, exactly double double the volume double the volume of acl is used. So the E part is that compare the concentration of solution Q used in experiment 1 to the concentration of solution L used in experiment 2. So basically both of these solutions K and L actually uh, use some some acid, right? So K used 10.4 centimeter cube of acid to be completely neutralized and L used 15.6 centimeter cube of acid to be neutralized. This is for the first sec first color change. For the second color change, uh, same sort of situation is happening. K is taking 20.8 and uh, L is taking 31.2 uh, centimeter cube of uh, the acid, which means that whatever volume the K is taking, uh, L is taking almost 1.5 times of that. So 10.4, let's take the first color change. I'm just taking the first color change. You can take the second color change, your call. So, so 10.4 centimeter cube of acid is used to neutralize K and 15.6 centimeter cube of acid was used to neutralize L. It meant that L had more hydrogen ions as compared to K. That's why L required more acid. So you can say that L was more concentrated, right? So you need to compare the concentration of solution Q to the concentration of solution L explain your answer. So you will, first of all, you will start with the volume that uh, let's say I'll take uh, L or K, you call. I'm taking K. He's, he's asking you that K. Achha, compare karna, na? You can aap K se bhi kar sakto, L se bhi kar sakto. So I'm going with K. So less volume of acid is required for K. 
right? You can all, you should also tell them how less, right? Less volume of acid is required for K, which means, which means L is more concentrated. These are only two points. There's, there is a requirement of third mark. So you'll have to tell them that how much more uh, acid is required by L. You will say that 1.5 times the volume of K. So you will say, uh, you can also say, mm, means L is more concentrated or you can simply say L is 1.5 times more concentrated. That will give you additional mark for this. Okay. Next one is the F part. Uh, reduce the volume of HCl needed for the second color change when the experiment 2 is repeated using 50 centimeter cube of L. Uh, so, 50 centimeter cube, you know, basically it, it has turned in twice. So, uh, the HCl needed for second color change for experiment 2 was, for experiment 2, the color change volume required that was 31.2 okay so you'll have to multiply this by 2 31.2 multiply by 2 that will give you 62.4 state why using 50 centimeter cube of solution l would cause a problem the thing is l has to be put into the burette burette has a limited range 50 centimeter cube will be out of range okay it will be out of range of burette it will be out of range for burette. State the advantage of using a pipette instead of measuring cylinder. Pipette is more accurate. Pipette is more accurate. Explain why conical flask was swirled as the hydrochloric acid was added from the burette. Obviously, to ensure mixing, you are swirling the flask to ensure that mixing is uh, done properly. Okay, to, to ensure uh, the proper mixing of solutions. To ensure the proper mixing of solutions. At the start of experiment one, burette was rinsed with water and then with dilute hydrochloric acid. At the start of the experiment too, the conical flask was rinsed with water, but not with solution L. Explain why conical flask was rinsed with water and not solution L. If you wash it, so, okay, first of all, why did they wash it with water? You'll have to answer that. We wash it with water to clean, right? You can simply say to clean. And why conical flask was not rinsed with solution L? Because uh, that would have been added to the volume of solution that of L that you are basically adding. Okay, so it would add, it would have added, it would have added an additional volume, an unknown volume actually, an unknown volume of L. Always remember whenever you are going to use conical flask repeatedly again and again between experiments you will also you will always rinse it with water but when it comes to burette before using a burette bef between the experiments you have to make sure that you wash it with the solution you wash it with the solution that is going that you are going to put next in the burette for example if you want to put hcl in the burette next you'll have to wash the burette with hcl okay Okay, so have, we have question number two. A student investigated the reaction between potassium hydroxide with two different aqueous solutions of HCl labeled solution A and B. So two experiments was done. In experiment one, a burette was filled with solution A, which was the acid HCl. Some of the solution A was run out of the burette so that the level of the solution A was on the burette scale. I've explained it in the previous, previous question as well that uh, why do you... Uh, run some liquid out of the burette. A measuring cylinder was used to measure 25 centimeter cube of the aqueous potassium hydroxide. He could have used a pipette here that would have made uh, the reading more accurate. The aqueous potassium hydroxide was poured into the conical flask. 
then methyl orange was added to the conical flask and then the solution a was added into the uh, from the burette to the conical flask and the neutralization reaction would have happened and the solution changed color so uh, final burette reading initial burette reading these are just free k marks so final burette reading is 17.9 and initial burette reading is exactly 8 and volume that was used would be 17.9 minus 8 that would be 9.9 right 9.9 yeah okay so let's look at the experiment too now the conical flask was emptied and it must have been rinsed with distilled water like i told you in the previous question the burette was emptied and rinsed with distilled water the burette was then rinsed with solution b because you're going to put the solution b in the burette that's why you rinsed it first with solution b some of the solution b was run out of the run out of the burette so that it falls into the range a measuring cylinder was used to measure 25 centimeter cube of potassium hydroxide and then you again added methyl orange indicator and then solution b was added and then the solution changed color the neutralization happened so let's see Aage kya hai? okay so initial and final period reading again you'll have to note uh, uh for final reading that would be 27.1 2 and 3 and initial burette reading is 7.5 and volume added would be 27.3 minus 7.5 that would be 19.8 so the volume used uh, in experiment 1 was 9.9 .9. and in this experiment so uh, the volume used was 19.8 okay it's exactly it's exactly double the volume uh, of solution b that means that the volume of acid that is used is almost double in experiment two as compared to in experiment one. So state the color change observed in the conical flask at the end point in experiment two. So we added methyl orange na? and in the conical flask you had potassium hydroxide and we added methyl orange into that. So methyl orange would give uh, the color that it has in a base which is yellow and in acid the color of the methyl orange is uh, orange or red. Orange, red. Before starting the titration experiment, the conical flask was rinsed with water. Explain why the conical flask was rinsed with water. Again, I, rip. I said to clean it. To clean it of any residues that may, have, that may be present. Right? And then the conical flask was not then rinsed with potassium hydroxide. State how rinsing the conical flask potassium hydroxide would change the volume of solution being needed. Explain your answer. We have done this in the previous part as well. And I'm doing it again so that it reinforces your concept. If you rinse it with the solution B, uh, if you rinse it with potassium hydroxide, that would mean that some potassium hydroxide would be would remain in the conical flask. And when you add the volume of solution B, which means uh, HCl, so more HCl will be required because there will be an extra amount of potassium hydroxide that you'll have to write. So we will say that a larger volume of B has to be added, has to be added because Uh, of extra unknown volume of potassium hydroxide in conical flask. That's why you always rinse the conical flask with water. Okay, deduce which aqueous solution of hydrochloric acid A or B was more concentrated. It's pretty simple. Uh, you had the same potassium hydroxide okay it took more volume of b to neutralize the potassium hydroxide and it took less volume of a what does that mean it means that a contained as much hydrogen ions which means that half the volume of a contained as much hydrogen ions as double the volume of b contained which meant that a would be more concentrated so deduce and explain your answer so you will say that uh, A will be more concentrated 
will be more concentrated as less volume as less volume of a was used did use how many times more concentrated the solution of hydrochloric acid was than the other solution of hydrochloric acid we just saw that b versus a uh, 19.8 cm cube of b it took 19.8 cm cube of b to neutralize uh, that potassium hydroxide 25 cm cube of potassium hydroxide why only 9.8 cm cube of a was required to neutralize the same amount of potassium hydroxide which meant that a is almost a is exactly actually it was 9.9 .9. a is twice as more concentrated okay and so how much marks is it carrying we don't know that let me see it's just a one mark question so you can just say that uh, uh, a is twice as more concentrated concentrated as compared to b as compared to b okay so the e part states that explain why experiment one and experiment two should be repeated uh, obviously uh, experiments are repeated to just map out or to find out anomalous results and to get a mean value you know so that uh, more reliability can be achieved okay so basically we repeat it to, to spot we repeat the iterations to spot anomalous results to spot anomalous results or you can also say to find the mean values which are more accurate which are more reliable okay do understand the difference between reliability and accuracy okay. accuracy is dependent on the equipment reliability is dependent on how much are you repeating an experiment how much reliable are these values that you're taking so anyway the f part says that reduce the volume of solution b required if experiment 2 is carried out of 50 cm cube of aqueous potassium hydroxide so you know the volume of b that was required if experiment 2 was carried out of 25 cm cube of aqueous potassium hydroxide now with 50 cm cube you just have to multiply this by 2 and it was uh, i think 19.8 and you will have to multiply this by 2 and you are going to get 39.6 right so you have to deduce it you will have to uh, write a sentence about it how would you do that uh, you would say that uh, uh, volume of solution b of solution b b required will be twice so we will have to multiply i think 19.9 multiply this by 2 and you will get 39.8 39 19.8 so 39.6 centimeter cube describe one change that you could be made to the apparatus to improve the accuracy of the results i pointed it out at the start that they use measuring cylinder to measure 25 centimeter cube of potassium hydroxide so you can use a pipette instead of potassium hydroxide use a pipette instead of measuring cylinder measuring cylinder to measure volume of potassium hydroxide volume of potassium hydroxide describe what effect using a larger conical flask would have on the results obtained nothing really what would what exactly would happen none okay guys i extracted another question but now i'm i am looking at it so it's pretty much the same and if you want to practice more questions, you can simply go to IGCSE paper 6 and you will find such questions. 
but the basics are going to remain the same we are going to ask you about uh, you know uh, reading the observations on the bureau reading and they'll ask you to calculate the volume the initial reading and the final reading and they'll ask they will compare the volumes okay if more volume is being used of an acid that means that uh, you know we done this right and uh, scale up the color change of the indicators and uh, how can you improve the accuracy of the experiment how can you improve the reliability of the experiment you know how these kind of things that we have already discussed in these two questions uh, almost 90% of the things are going to repeat in other type of questions almost 90% of things even more than 90% so if you are able to grasp if you have been able to grasp the first question and if you are able to do the second question yourself then i think you are good to go and you can practice more questions by going to idcse papers and uh, you can uh, skim through it and you can find the questions okay see you in the next video